Hey, have you heard of this thing called the internet? Back in the 90s, people were really excited about it, and even though it never really took off, they talked it up like it was going to be the next big thing. So much so that PBS even put out this amazing video called The Internet Show to help people get a handle on this new and exciting technology. Hosted by this computer columnist and Borat if he were ordered from Wish.com, they make the internet sound really boring and complicated by discussing at length things like newsgroups, telnet, and electronic mail. You know, the future. All you need to use the internet are a computer and a network connection. Can you tell these two were writers and not actors? Banging soundtrack though with this sick ass saxophone solo. All right, so what's this internet thing all about anyway? In some ways, it's a lot like your car. You don't have to know how every single part works in order to drive to some wonderful places. Pornhub. He's talking about Pornhub. You can check out all kinds of graphic images on the internet. See? A nerd is someone whose life is focused on computers and technology. Does anyone else find this mildly offensive? It's like, hey, there's this brand new communications tool where you can instantly access all kinds of information from all over the world, but if you use it, you're a fucking nerd, you fucking nerd. An internaut is someone who travels the internet. Okay, I have never heard of this word before, and I've watched dozens of old 90s videos about the internet. Also, I was a teenager when this video came out, and I've never heard anyone use this term ever before. I bet this guy just kind of invented it and snuck it into one of his books and was really hoping it would catch on. So they go on to talk about ARPANET, computers, networks, and packet switching. Then they jump right into email, where they spend 10 minutes describing email addresses and the advantages of email over regular mail. One of the biggest advantages is that messages reach their destinations, what we call electronic mailboxes, almost instantaneously. Replying, forwarding, and all the stuff an average office worker in 2022 does about 10,000 times a week. You might end up canceling the rest of your life just so you can keep up with your email. Yeah, tell me about it. So they honestly spend like a quarter of the video talking about email. And you're like, yeah, that was a big deal back then. But how long does it take to say, oh, uh, it's like regular mail, except they get it right away. So I better reply right away. I can do that just by clicking on this reply button here. Now I can also insert information from his message. So he'll remember what I'm talking about. You see include original and put it right here. And I can send it along. And he should be getting it right about now. And it all happened within a minute or two. They talk a lot about news groups and message boards, two more bits of the early internet that were relegated to the dustbin of history. Or maybe you're into nude sunbathing. Go on. One of my favorite parts of the internet is Usenet. Oh, they're just talking about Usenet. Another way to find groups of people who share your interests is through mailing lists, or lists for short. They start talking about mailing lists, which is what we would now call marketing spam that gets sent directly to the trash folder. And now I'll get all the messages from that list. I subscribe to lots of other mailing lists. Another great example is a list for movie reviews. From this long list. The catalog of lists at MIT. Nobody has a complete list of all the mailing lists on the internet. Well, you can start your own mailing list. Ooh, I hope they have more to say about lists. Ah, oh, damn it. Chat lets you talk online with other people who are online at the same time. So they talk about chatting for a while, and I realize at this point we're about halfway through the video, and all they've really done is discuss different methods of sending messages to other people over the internet. Like, yeah, okay, I get that that was a big deal back then, but this video was put out in 1995, and there were literally thousands of personal and commercial websites that they could have looked at, and these two haven't even opened a browser yet. As an introvert, I'd be watching this video back in 1995 thinking, talking to random strangers? No thank you, this internet business is not for me. Is work piling up at the office? Is that report due tomorrow? Well, hey, it's time to take a break. And the internet has some serious time-wasting fun available. Yeah, that's a good point. Like whenever my work is piling up and I have a big report due tomorrow, the first thing that comes to my mind is I should really play some computer games. There's a well-known online coffee pot at Cambridge University in England. It has a video camera trained on it all the time. So just in case I need a cup during my next visit to England, there's one cup left, I better hurry. The hell is he talking about, a virtual coffee pot? I don't understand any of this. Now, we don't see this much nowadays, but did you know that people sending you angry messages and trying to bait you into an argument is something that could happen on the internet? I know it's hard to believe, but here's some advice on how to handle it if it does happen to you. My recommendation is that even if you get a really offensive message and you just have to reply, don't. Well, I'm just glad us modern day internauts don't have to put up with any of that. As we've seen, there's obviously a lot of stuff on the internet, so how do I get help finding the specific things that I'm looking for? 
Well, it's a good thing I asked because these two are very excited to introduce me to some tools that will help me surf the web, as they say, become a real Netscape navigator, as it were, and turn me into a real internet explorer. Of course, I'm talking about Gopher. Now, Gopher is called a menu-based program because it always shows you a list of the items that you can possibly choose from. They go on and on about Gopher for what feels like a confusing eternity, and to be fair, neither Netscape Navigator nor Internet Explorer had been released when this video was produced, so I guess that's why they're making the internet sound so unbelievably complicated. But we finally get to the World Wide Web after about 48 and a half minutes, which, as we all know, is the most common way people access the internet today. Another cool way to find stuff on the net is to use the World Wide Web, or is it sometimes called the web or www? The web does have its drawbacks, though. But the number of hypertext documents available on the net is still somewhat limited, so you may find more on a subject in a gopher search. Then they get into Telnet and explain that in tedious detail, and now it's time for... Aw, oh, hell yeah, let's go. We all know what this is going to be about. Much of the net is based on the Unix computer operating system, and if you're familiar with PCs or with Macintoshes, you'll need to learn a few new commands. Okay, well that is not the kind of dirty secret that I've come to expect from the internet. People hiding behind the anonymity of the internet tend to go overboard in expressing their outrage. Well, there are a few people who use that anonymity to lie about who they are. Wow, she predicted Twitter. So then they talk about how scientists use the internet to collaborate with colleagues, remotely control scientific instruments, and analyze data. So yeah, the internet is just for fucking nerds. But businesses were also starting to use the internet back then, which was controversial, and with the benefit of 30 years of hindsight, may I just say, what you're about to hear is myopically and adorably naive. Most companies have found a way to offer goods and services without offending those who think that advertising on the internet is inappropriate. Imagine living in a world where advertising on the internet was thought of as inappropriate. That's just so cute. Finally, they start talking about Mosaic, which was the first iteration of a web browser, and these two are pretty stoked about it. Mosaic and programs like it are the future of the internet. These programs make it easier for non-geeks to use the net. Damn, browsers look like they could really shape the future of the internet. If only there was a way to predict what... As the equipment linking computers on the net permits faster and faster connections, the door opens for more use of graphics and full motion film, video, and even live action events. Okay, in all honesty, I was really hoping that would be funnier, but it's actually an astute and concise vision of what the internet would look like going forward. Part of the internet's future is wrapped up in technology. The rest is sociology. I think that's a really interesting comment because as much as sociology has informed what the modern internet looked like, the internet has also informed what's been going on sociologically. The internet is our main source of entertainment, it's our main source of discourse, and as we've seen in recent years, it's one of our main sources of connection. The internet also represents a new type of communication, one that permits people in separate places to meet in a new territory called cyberspace. It's an electronic landscape where people can interact, conduct business, and do whatever they normally do elsewhere. Watching people in these old videos about the internet being so optimistic is like watching somebody who's never owned a dog before get really excited about adopting a puppy. Sure, it looks cute, but once you get that puppy home, you're going to be spending a lot of your time cleaning up shit and getting bitten before you end up with something that actually enriches your life. And I'm not quite sure if we're out of the internet's puppy stage or not. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time.